things going with you lately? Good. Good? Good. Good. Busy? Yeah. Exciting? Everything. Stress? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Your house is ready for Christmas? All decorated? Shopping done? Gifts wrapped? Not yet. You know, during this season, the statistics says that most people, most of us are under what is called perpetual restlessness. Not only because the seasons brings excitement and busyness and we are pulled away in so different uh, directions, but also it is family time. And when family gathers, it is good, sometimes it is bad. We are <laughs> forced to deal with some broken relationships. So when we are busy, when we have to think about what to buy, when we have to think about what to act, how to act, it just gives us craziness. So, the peace of mind is the most sought after commodity during this season. So, how would you like to have some peace of mind? You know, when our relationships are broken, that we cannot have peace at all. We would like to have some peace of mind during this season. That's what Christ, we call him Prince of Peace, right? This is the second Sunday of Advent. We are going to focus on peace, peace of mind. What is definition of peace of mind? A sense of freedom from fear, anxiety, stress, strain, worries. It's a inner calmness and tranquility. Is it kind of sorrow? When do you have such a feeling, state of mind? As you did this morning, you come to worship the Lord God. When you meditate upon the Word of God, when you are with uh, your loved ones, when you are lying down on the beach and sipping my tie, you may have <laughs> peace of mind. When even when you are in deep sleep, you can have some peace of mind. The state of mind gives you inner calmness and tranquility. All those activities can bring us peace of mind for a temporary, short time. The minute you wake up, the minute your vacation is over, hello, where is peace of mind? You know, somebody suggested top five things to do to have a peace of mind all the time, under any circumstances. And one thing I agree, I mean, that's almost like that I give you this five, but I'm gonna talk about focus on only one thing this morning, not five things, don't get so scared. All right, so top five, this is fifth one, is that do not burden somebody's business. Do mind your own business. We know that's no brainer, right? <laughs> because people, we try to force other people do the things the way we think it should be. I mean, we think that our way is the best way, so we always put in somebody else's business. So if you don't, you will not have a conflict. And without conflict, you can have some peace of mind, right? And the fourth one was, do not crave for the recognition. People are generally selfish. When they give you recognition or praise, 
then they have something in mind. Hidden agenda. We are selfish. We naturally don't need any approval or recognition. So, who needs other people's approval? Last Sunday we learned that we shouldn't give anybody right, such power over us. We shouldn't let the people to approve or disapprove us. We only need what? God's approval. Right? So that is, how many did I do? Two. 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 (laughs) (laughs) And the third one is, bite what you can chew. Huh? Huh? Chew what you can bite? No, bite what you can chew, right? No brainer. Yeah? And some people have a problem with this because they have a problem to say no. So they say yes, and their hands are all different parts and just pulling each different direction. They are ah! right? chaotic their lives. And then fourth one was, no, five, four, I, can, I have a hard time to do two. two. So second. <laughs> second one was what? Try not to change things you cannot change. Try not to cure things you cannot cure. Change things you can change. What can you change? Yourself. Yourself. That's right. Lately, I've been monko monko about complaining about the ball. <laughs> I tried to stop the ball. That will give me, put me under a lot of stress. No can stop the ball. I've got to adjust myself, right? Stay inside. Huh? Wear some sunglasses. Is that gonna help? <laughs> you know, it never bothered me. But ever since I used my eye drops for a glaucoma, and it just suddenly hit me, and I blame about blaming about my eye drops. I cannot stop using eye drops unless I wanna go blind, right? So I've got to change things what I can change. That's second, right? So first one, that's what the, the thing that I most agree and what we need to practice every day in order for us to have some peace of mind and, and uh, uh, live a life, a decent life that Christ came to give us. And can you guess what that was is? considering foundation based on what you read this morning, what would that be? That's a big question. What would that be? Hmm? We read the Bible, talk about sin and repentance and forgiveness. That is the number one aim to have some peace of mind. If we make it daily activity, practice, we can cultivate a peace of mind into our daily habit. That is forgiveness. That's what God wants us to hear this morning, and second Advent Sunday. Some of you might say, well, Christmas time is not to talk about sin. We know we are sinners. We're supposed to talk about love. Well, it's love. Right? But think again. It is love. Love do not keep the records of wrongdoings. Because God loves us, He sent His Son to redeem us from our sins. That is forgiveness, is love. When we truly understand, receive forgiveness, 
We claim forgiveness in our lives and we pay forgiveness, release forgiveness. Then we can certainly have peace of mind. That is a bottom line. If but that is not done, no can have peace. Always you can have a temporary peace of mind. A true foundation of peace we can have. That where we can make our heart straight path for the coming Jesus Christ, coming the King. Amen? Amen. So what we have to do? What must we do? What needs to be done? I've come up with uh, three T's. I was down for only two, but three. Turn and thrive and tau. Tau is, did I pronounce it right or not wrong? T-H-A-W. Tau? Tau. 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 See, I knew it, so tau. <laughs> okay, tau. Defrost. Yeah. <laughs> See, I have to come up with the same same start T. So I said, I don't know. I don't, I never use this word, but I know what it means. Good thing that I asked you. Ta. Okay. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> All right. Now, what's the first one? Turn. Turn what? Turn away from our sin. To have peace of mind. To make our heart straight for the coming King. Turn away from our sin. Verse 3, John the Baptist was saying, he went all around the country, around Jordan, and preaching what? Baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of your sins. So what is a repentance? Sure. Hold your ideas. And let me tell you, there is a four priests. They gather for breakfast, prayer. And they gather and pray about everything. And then one said, you know, our people come to us, confess their sins in repentance. I believe repentance is good for the soul, so let us do that to each other so that we can feel free. We can have some peace of mind. So in due time, they all agreed to do that. So the first priest confessed. Well, I have gambling problem. My finances is a mess. The second one confessed, well, I'm struggling with lust and I can't seem to focus on my job. And third one confessed, well, I'm a compulsive shopper. I buy things that I don't need. My house is cluttered. And the last one, the fourth priest, he wouldn't confess. So, three priests came up on him. You heard our secret. Please, tell us what is your secret? What is your sin? Huh? You all know the story. No? Good. The, the last priest says, it's gossiping. I can hardly wait to get out of here. Hear <laughs> what he heard. Is it repentance? Repentance begins, yes, I am a sinner. I have this sin. I am a gospel. Gossiping is my sin. But that's halfway done, right? It ends with what? Turn away from that sin. That's repentance. 
Repentance begins. I am a sinner. I confess my sin. I vow not to do it again. I won't do it. Right? Now, we have all done that to our Lord Jesus when we were baptized in the name of uh, Jesus and uh, name of Son and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Now, do we not sin anymore? Anybody who is sin haven't sinned yet ever since uh, you've been baptized. Please raise your hand. <laughs> why is that? Then when I repent, why don't I get baptized again? Right? John the Baptist says, says what? Baptism of repentance. What a baptism is baptism of repentance. Why don't I get re-baptized, re-baptized again and again? Like some other denominations doing that. Huh? Yeah. One baptism is enough for our life. When we are baptized, when we say ABC, I'm a sinner, believe in Jesus Christ, and commit my life to follow Him, that is done there. When we baptize, then the Holy Spirit comes in living within us. Amen? Amen. That's why we don't re baptize. And the John the Baptist says, well, I baptize you with the water, but the, the one who is coming after me will baptize you with the what? Holy Fire. The Holy Spirit. So when we are really, really repenting of our sins, and we are finished the process, turn away from that sin, when we feel the warmness in our hearts, don't you? If you haven't experienced the fire in your heart, hello, maybe you stopped in the middle. The turn. <laughs> right? You know, the one we feed, it will grow. We have uh, two natures in, our, in living within us, sinful nature and spiritual nature, because we've been baptized. So, if we keep on giving the authority over the desires of our flesh, then we will continue to live in sin life, sin-filled life. If we give power over to the Holy Spirit, His leading, then we can grow spiritually we will sin less and less every moment, every day of our lives. Like uh, gardeners or farmers, they know this very well. Our sinful nature, sin is like weeds. So you pulled up all the weeds one day, hello, your garden's clean and sparkling clean and weedless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right? Can you live it like that for the rest of your life? I wish. I wish. <laughs> I wish, but no can. One downpouring rain would do magic and sprout again. Then, if you, you don't take care of it, your yard going to be filled with Weeds. No can tell which is a plant, which is a weed. Like I might, no, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but whenever it sprouts out, we've got to pull it out or use what do you call it? The roundabout? <laughs> huh? Roundout. Okay, roundout. Right? That is what the Holy Spirit does. You let the Holy Spirit, like uh, use the Holy Spirit like a round up, <laughs> spray on your sinful nature, our sinful nature, our desires of flesh. And let the Holy Spirit lead us to turn away completely. In Greek words, repentance is reversal. 
Unless we make a complete turnaround, no turning back, it's not to repentance. Got it? So, for the preparation of coming king, to have some peace of mind, we've got to pray. Let the Holy Spirit work in us. All I got is what to have prayer. And the day, and the night. Right? <laughs> All right. We need to pray. Turn away from our sin. Got it? Second was uh, pride. I don't know I use the correct words or not. It is thrive in God's love. Flourish in God's love. Prosper in God's love. The problem is this. That, all right, we been baptized, we repented of our sins, that we know we got cleansed by the blood of Jesus, and we are new creation in Christ. But oftentimes, we let who? Satan remind us of our all sin, past failures and mistakes, past sin. And we allow Satan to hunt us, to put us in depression. How? Why do I keep on doing this? I uh, repented of this sin forever, but how can I not get rid of this with? Remember, our God loves us. He sacrificed His Son for us. And His blood cleansed us. And the Holy Spirit lives within us so that we can prosper in His love, in His guidance. We've got to realize that our new life no one can take away from Jesus. John chapter 10, verse 28. Jesus said what? I gave them eternal life. No one, no nothing, can what? Snatch them out of my hand. We've got to dwell on that. We've got to prosper on that. Flourish in that love. You know, Dr. Carl Manager, the psych psychiatrist, he says this, 75% of psychiatric hospital patients will be going home when they truly grasp the idea of God's love. 75% of psychiatric patients. A lot of times, Satan would love us to fall back, don't get up. But we have a power in us that lifts us up. We can say to Jesus, I trust God's love because God loved me, because God sent His Son to die for me, because I accepted His offer. I am special. You know, we think that we are just Christian because I accepted Jesus. But think again, Jesus said what? You did not choose me, I chose you. You know, the gospel of Jesus Christ is all over the nation. People know that. But you are the only one. You are the one accepted. We don't know how many will accept Jesus. We don't know how many he has chosen. They are not here. That's why we've got to. But the problem 
that we keep on falling is our past. And in his book, Dr. Uh, car manager, in his book uh, about uh, God's forgiveness, he talks about a priest. Priest is on the trial today. <laughs> he talks about priest and, uh, and a lady in his congregation. And this lady keep telling everybody that she meet uh, Christ face to face in her dream every day. And she prophesies and she tells everybody what Christ Jesus told her and this and that. And the priest was kind of skeptical about her encounter, divine uh, encounter. So he asked her, okay, next time Jesus showed up in your dream, would you please ask what sin that I have committed when I was uh, in seminary? <laughs> and so she said, okay, I will do that. And then next time priest saw her and he asked her, did you ask? She said, yes, I did. What did God say about my sin? What was my sin? And she said what? God says what? Don't remember. <laughs> I forgot, God said. You see, God forgives and forgets. It's not God is a, 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 into a, what do you call it, amnesia or Alzheimer's disease? No. God, we are forgetful. God is never forgetful, right? right? You know, we are opposite. We are so forgetful unless we are in argument. We are so remembering all hysterical instead of with the historical. <laughs> History and historical, right? We remember the uh, offense 20 years ago when you argue, right? You, you throw all that out. But our God, is not forgetful, but God choose not to use your offense against you when you come next time. That's what how our God does. So should we too, right? We should forget and forgive ourselves. It's the hardest thing sometimes. I keep preaching forgiveness. But on and off, I am feeling guilt and shame about my past, about. But God has forgiven me, right? And I should move on. I am doing good. <coughs> but sometimes, and we should, every time Satan tempts us to go in, that direction, we should be able to say, what? Get, get behind Satan, that's why. Get behind Satan. I am forgiven. I am alive and well because my God, my Jesus, died and rose again. I am I am covered with his blood. I am covered with his love. You know, when we grasp up the idea of how much God loves us, that it will change our way of life. Think about it. Can you sacrifice your kid to just even help? help your spouse? I mean, take a heart out of your son and give to your spouse? Can you do that? It's amazing. We don't understand, actually, how God could do this. It's an amazing love. We are living in it. So we better thrive in that love. That's how we can have some peace of mind and prepare our hearts for the Christ's coming. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then, last one, whose phone was ringing? Oh. Oh.
Oh. Last one is what? Thaw. All right, that's the one. What? Thaw. 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 Okay, Rada has to work with me. Okay, I'm going to work on that. Next time I step up here, I will say it exactly right. But defrost. <laughs> defrost the frozen relationships to make a straight path for the coming king and to have some peace of mind. You know, one thing we love about Christmas is family gathering. And one thing also we dread about Christmas is family <laughs> gathering. <laughs> some families do this. They don't see eye to eye. They just pretend everything is okay. Halfway defrost. You know, and then Christmas is over, they put it back in the freezer <laughs> and freeze again. Every year they do that. Halfway freeze. Halfway freeze. If we do that to our food, is it gonna be edible? No. 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 Same as the relationships. It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> Keep on doing that. Right? And this is time to Forgive and forget and move on. That's divorce your frozen relationships in your life. You know, there's a story about a guy who is an adult man who is in tears sharing his story and why he's spending his uh, Christmas all by himself. He him and his father was a great friends. What do you call it? How do you say it? P A L. Pal. 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 And out of something very innocent, one thing led to another. They were arguing. One thing led to another. This guy ended up punching his father, knocking down. And nobody would ever expect it that could happen. Nobody ever dreamed about that could happen. I mean, he couldn't believe himself, and father went crazy. Father got up and tried to kill him, and about a half an hour, his mother in between the struggle and tried to prevent him to kill her son, and eventually, Half an hour later, father stopped and said to his wife, for your sake, I'm not going to kill him today. But no son of mine will keep me and leave. He's not allowed to put his step, put his foot in this house. Ever since, he couldn't go. He spent Christmas all by himself. And his friend suggested, if you were his friend, what would you say? What would you suggest to him? Huh? Go. Even if you die, right? <laughs> Go kneel down in front of your father and let him get it all out on you. You know, you can back on your mom's protection, don't you? <laughs> she didn't let him kill you in the first place. I mean, way back then when, certainly she ain't gonna let him kill you right now. Because if she left, then she will lose both your father and son. Is there any relationships? It's frozen in your life have a friction in your life. That's the thing that God wants us to take care of so that we can have a very Merry Christmas. We can have some peace of mind. When that is done there, then everything else can get out of hand. Kids can run around and our Dishes burn, or whatsoever happens, we can still have inner peace, inner calmness, and tranquility.
That's how we should prepare the Christmas forgiveness is a big deal. And so let us during this season, let us do our very best to end in a prayer to turn away from our sin. And second was let us drive in God's love. The stress of the idea how much God loves us. God loves you. And you gotta say it. For the relationships. <laughs> That's when we all can have some peace of mind. We can cultivate the peace of mind into our daily habits. All the days of our lives, we can be in peace. Peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Also, Amen. 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 Let us pray.